Playing aggressively has always been one of the best ways to improve at the game. By constantly getting into engagements, you run into so many different scenarios to learn from. It helps you figure out how to efficiently get kills and also teaches how to survive when things aren't going your way. Not only that, but the aggressive playstyle is a blast to play. It can help you win games while at the same time letting you experience that amazing feeling of dropping double-digit elims. What's going on guys, it's your host Dan again, and today we're going to be taking a look at how aggression fares up in Season X. It's a playstyle that works better than most people expect, and it's something that we think every player can benefit from. We'll be referring to some arena gameplay from third place World Cup finisher Epic Whale in most of our examples. He's an insane player, so his footage will be a good way to show how the pros use the aggressive playstyle to rack up points. Before we get started, Pro Guides has a small announcement to make. We're adding a ton of new features to our site, exclusive guide and analysis videos for our pro members. Also, ProPass now grants access to all games. We have more free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member, so head on over to Pro Guides by clicking the link in the description below. Most players think that playing aggressively is an automatic death sentence. Sure, while it can lead to losses in the short term, the overall benefit it provides is so much better than what you can achieve by playing passively. The first big reason why you should be playing aggressive is that you can quickly learn what works and what doesn't. A mistake that a lot of new players make is that they try to play passively for the win. They have this mentality that avoiding fights can get them the win, even though they're going to run into somebody eventually. That can work when you're already good at the game, but if you're not there yet, it can be a struggle. Maybe every 1 in 20 games the bush camper can win, but the odds aren't very good. You gain almost nothing by playing this way. Combat is such a huge part of the game that every player, even experienced ones, should be spending some of their games focusing on fighting. It can really help improve your mechanics and game sense, and while you can grind your mechanical abilities in creative, being able to apply them in real game scenarios is a skill that needs to be learned as well. Even if you were to lose 100 games in a row hot dropping, you didn't waste your time. As long as you critically evaluate why you died and apply what you've learned, you're much less likely to make the same mistakes again. Another reason why hard aggression works so well is how unexpected it can be. It's something that an average player in the lobby isn't ready for. They normally won't know what to do against somebody pressuring the ever-living heck out of them. They won't turbo build in time, won't have a weapon out when needed, or will straight up feel too pressured to make the right decision. Look at Epic Whale here. He shoots at a fighting player who falls behind cover, so he pushes up immediately. Whale is able to just rush him with a minigun, take his wall, take his stairs, then trap him for an easy elimination. The player probably knew he got shot at here, but the last thing he expected was to be full on rushed, and he had no game plan because he wasn't expecting it at all. Obviously, Epic Whale is a nutty pro player, and with the arena points reset, he's fighting players way below his caliber. But the aggressive playstyle can work at a higher level too. We saw the Argentinian player, King, absolutely dominate some of the best players of all time at the World Cup. So a great elimination there on the Bucky in the rotation. But now watch on the spree zone. Five elims right now. Cones himself off. Look at this. The player challenges him. He's not building. He's going at him. He says, if you want to fight me, I shoot first. I am the king. Mainly because the players were not expecting that level of aggression. And that helped him take home the fifth place prize of $900,000. Crazy to think about how effective the results can be when you don't give your opponents time to think. If you want to get right into the action, a good landing is a must. If you mess up by flying over a hill or jumping too early, you're going to be behind on securing a drop location, a good loadout, and potentially even some kills. Normally, when you do land and are able to get a good loadout, you can start rushing players. For instance, if by pure chance you get a combat shotgun, SMG, and mini shields right at the start, you can bet that your opponents won't have the same. Their inventory will eventually catch up, so you need to use the short amount of time you're ahead of them to make a move on them. You don't have to land in a high population area to play aggressively, but it sure does help you run into players more often. Of the 21 kills Epic Whale dropped in this arena game, 13 of them happened in Neo Tilted. The safe zones, bust paths, and how players rotate has a lot to do with their location throughout the match. You can normally expect an abundance of players on the edges of the safe zone whenever the storm is closing. In this case, the edge is right on Neo Tilted, which is why Whale encountered so many players. Knowing how the bus path moved and the zones players commonly land at can help you look for players when you need a fight. Aggressive gameplay is all about getting up close and personal. Always be trying to close the gap between you and your opponent. You'll be able to utilize your builds and edits to finish your enemies much quicker. If all you do is sit back and fire with rifles, your enemies will just keep building or find ways to escape. Taking control of the fight by placing your structures near your opponent is the best way to quickly win it. Here's a pretty minor example, but it shows the idea behind structure control. 
Look at this wall put up here. If Epic Whale didn't place it, his opponent would have likely run up, built some cover, and then taken high ground. Instead, placing the wall halted his movements completely, and allowed Whale to edit and get the kill much faster. We already saw in a previous example how Epic Whale closed the gap to finish a player, but let's take a look at another. After getting tagged once, Whale's opponent decides to land on a tall building and base up. Some players would see that and decide not to push because of their height advantage. The fight would probably end in a stalemate with both players retreating. Since he's got the skills and knows this guy won't be able to respond to pressure, Whale pushes up to make sure he can quickly finish him. As we said before, most players don't know how to respond to aggression, and this guy is the perfect example. He doesn't even want to build fight, and instead just defaults into dropping down and trying to hide. Now that he's up close, Whale starts using his walls to keep himself protected and to deny his opponent control. After each shot, he places a wall just in case of return fire. Eventually, this poor guy gets cornered and doesn't know where to go, so Epic Whale makes the choice for him and sends him to the lobby. There are going to be times when you need to slow down a little, whether it's to heal up or get some mats. Playing on the defensive is alright when you're in a dire situation, but once you recover, you want to keep rushing players. Confidence is key in this area, so even if you're not fully topped up, you shouldn't be afraid of getting into engagements. Don't go search for more shields just because you're missing a small amount. Being able to play with what you've got is a big part of the Battle Royale experience, so you'll be gaining a ton of practice in that area. If you notice a fight is happening already or has just finished, don't hesitate to third party. In most cases, you're going to be able to pick up a kill or two with way less effort than it takes to fight one-on-one. -on -one. If they're fighting, they're distracted, and if they just finished, there's a good chance the winner is still recovering from the fight. Both scenarios put you in a very advantageous position. If you can, take the high ground by landing on it, building up while they're busy. Then try focusing on a single target, preferably whichever one is on the defensive, but usually whichever one you have an opening on. Sometimes you can sit back and just try to laser them with your rifle, but normally it's better to get right up to them so that you can apply pressure and secure the kills easier. One piece of advice that's important for a couple of reasons when playing aggressively is to always be on the move, whether it's during or outside of a fight. Not many players have good enough situational awareness to keep track of their opponents mid-fight, so constantly changing position is a great way to minimize damage and find openings to attack. Especially in this season, where sitting still for too long can lead to instant death from a missile barrage. Outside of fights, mobility is one of the ways you can find players to attack. If you have an excess of launch pads, don't be afraid to use one so you can look for players. Also, in Season X, you've got the Loot Lake Rift with unlimited uses that can always be taken to scout with. The launch of this season did see an overall reduction in mobility, but with the return of Shadow Stones and Hop Rocks, it looks as if we might start seeing more options to move around the map quicker. Lastly, let's talk about loadouts. The loadout you use while playing aggressively isn't all too different from any other loadout. There are a couple of points to bring up, though. One thing is that you want to carry multiple heal items. With the number of engagements you're going to get into, you need as many ways to heal as possible. You don't want to be carrying minis only to be stuck with missing health after a fight. And with how close range the engagements are, you don't really need more than two or three weapons. A shotgun and a rifle are the two primary ones that should provide enough versatility for most situations. If you'd like, the third weapon can be an RPG, sniper, minigun, or SMG. All of those can be used quite aggressively, especially the heavy sniper with its ability to one-shot structures and deal massive damage from afar. You can also fill up that third slot with another utility item. Stinky bombs, shockwaves, boogie bombs, and the newly added junk rift are all good options. Shockwaves are the most versatile, as they can also be used defensively, but with how much raw power stinks and this new junk rift have, they fit a little better into the aggressive playstyle. For all the players who feel their progression has been halted lately, you should spend some time playing aggressively. It's pretty much guaranteed to make you better at the game. With so many different situations that can occur in this game, you need to be able to experience them all in order to learn. All we can say is that you shouldn't get mad at losses, because unless you're nuts at the game, they're gonna occur. You need to stay calm and think critically about your mistakes, or else you won't improve from it as much. In Arena, aggression is going to be significantly harder to pull off since the game matches you with similarly skilled opponents. It's still entirely possible, but if you care about your points a lot, you might want to stick to regular modes. Either way, the rating you gain and lose is temporary, but the skills you gain along the way can last forever. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, make sure that you like it and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel because we have more videos just like this one coming at you every single day. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and good luck with your Fortnite grind.